All right, so this is your first time opening um, MySQL Workbench, and you created your local connection to your local database. Let's click on it, and we're going to go into our database, right? Our database engine in our machine. Now, what's important to notice here is that in any database system, such as MySQL, you have what's called databases or schemas. Databases or schemas are ways to group sets of data, sets of tables, okay? If you have read about tables. So we want to group everything that we do in this tutorial for this workshop, we want to group it into a specific schema. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to create a new schema. We're going to call it, we click on this little button here with a plus sign, we give it a name. If my name is John Doe, I might just say J Doe, first initial, last name, underscore, local, just so I know, or DB, right? Just so I know that that is my database or schema. My SQL now calls it schema, used to call it database uh, for the longest time. So it, in my SQL, those two words are synonyms. So I'll create my schema. Here's the SQL command to create it. You can do the, all of this through SQL. We're just going to do it graphically for this one. I'll apply. You can see that it executed the SQL uh, statements and the script was successfully applied to the database. So I'm going to close this. You notice that this tab opened. I can close it. And the other thing that you will notice is that, that now here, underneath the word schemas, in, uh, in this sidebar, I have JoeDB right that's my repository now because there are two repositories here uh, MySQL Workbench when you type something in SQL it will actually it doesn't know which one to use right now by default it's using sys but I want to use JoeDB so the first thing that I'm gonna say that I'm gonna tell the system is to use JoeDB okay I'll highlight it click the lightning Rod, um, oh, J Doe TB. I'm sorry. I noticed that there was an error here and an error here, right? And it says error code, whatever, unknown database, Joe DB. That's how I know that it was not Joe DB, it was J Doe DB. So I'm going to tell the system that I'm going to use that database. And that works. It says use Joe DB with like a green mark here. That's good. And JoeDB is now bold in bold fonts. What I can do, then I can use it for anything here. If, um, for example, let's create a database called employee. So I'm going to create, I mean, a, a table. Create table employee. Okay. And in that table, I'm going to have a few fields here. I'm going to have uh, staff ID, which is going to be a, I'm going to say, a character of uh, three. That's going to be like some code for my staff ID, like AB1 or one, two, three, or any, any, any string of length three, comma. Then I'm going to have their last name. last name and that's going to be a var car 15 which basically means that uh, the last name can be a string of up to 15 characters any 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 character below 15 uh, and up to 15 and then I'm gonna have a salary for example which is going to be a decimal a decimal uh, with a maximum of seven digits with a maximum of seven digits, two of which are decimal. Okay, that's uh, I only pay low salaries apparently. All right. Okay, so then close this and semicolon. You always want to end your commands in semicolon. So we'll highlight this whole thing and execute it, and you will see that it went through. Create table employee went through, and it always will say zero rows affected because I didn't affect any of the rows in the table, I just created a table. Ignore these X's for, for the time being, 
uh, MySQL Workbench is a little spotty on a Mac, and, and it gives you some some weird output still. But so I created a table, right? And one thing that I can do is to click on this little thing, which will basically refresh the schemas if it's not refreshed automatically. And you will see that under tables, I have, I click here and I have employee. And if I click on employee, you will see that I have the columns over here. All right? So I've created, successfully created my table employee. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to insert a record. Insert a record in this table. So insert into employee, and I'm going to give um, the values that I'm going to insert. Uh, the values that I'm going to insert in order, right? In this order: staff ID, last name, and salary. So I'm going to say staff ID is going to be. SG1. Okay, uh, strings have to be uh, have to be surrounded by single quotes. Then the last name, okay, Williams, and then the salary, which is going to be eight thousand nine hundred and fifty and seventy six cents. That's going to be one record. I can execute this. And you will see again a green here saying that this record was inserted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another record here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be SG2. It's not going to be Williams. It's going to be um, Mr. Sampras. And the salary for Mr. Sampras is going to be $5,000 sharp and I can insert it like that that's fine I'll put it there and it went through now how do I know that this inserts went through well I can always select okay select the contents of my table so I can say select everything from employee semicolon and execute it and now this window appears here. This is a view of the table, like if it were like an Excel spreadsheet. Here are the columns, staff ID, last name, salary, and I see my staff IDs, the two people here, and their salaries. And you see that the 5,000, it appended the two zeros. Now I can close this here, down, down here. And I can even do more interesting things. For example, select uh, last, whoops, last name from employee, right? And this will actually bring up just the last name, not the salary, nothing else, just the last name. Now, I can do something uh, a little bit more interesting. Last name, comma, salary from employee. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a where clause. Basically, I'm going to restrict the number of employees that I'm displaying. I'm going to say, where salary is greater than five thousand dollars semicolon if I run this I only get Williams who has uh, who, who makes eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars right here I'm restricting this so I can I can provide many restrictions with the where class and this is how you use basically uh, my SQL workbench one last thing is this use uh, JDO database? It is a good practice to always have it up here so you know which database you're working with. Always good practice. However, you can always click on Joe database or the database that you use by default all the time, right click on it, and say set as default schema. I'm not going to set it now because I really think that preventing the use up here is just a very good practice. And this is how you use MySQL Workbench. There are many other alternatives to MySQL Workbench. Okay, There are Java alternatives. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's other uh, data grip. There's many other alternatives to a Workbench to work with MySQL. You're welcome to use any one you want. They all have 
basically the same thing. A bar here with what you have and your tables and space to do SQL. Oh, one last thing. Let's save this query. So we like the script. If you want to save it, you should go to the file menu, which you don't see in this video, but you go to file and then save script. And you will save the script and you will, you will give it a name and it will be a .sql file. And that concludes this little video.